film kind of like an idiot because I shot the whole episode. I sat in front of a window and backlit the whole thing. You couldn't see my face. So I'm sitting here thinking, do I shoot it again? Does it really matter? Hey. Hey. Look a little rough around the edges. Yeah, I'm feeling a little rough around the edges. I just woke up. Uh, yeah, I wanted to chime in on this whole reshoot, don't reshoot thing. Uh, you got this comment. Uh, if you if your activism is erased from history, don't worry. Your glamour shot will get you some attention. Glad to see you went from radical activist to being self-absorbed. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're asking my opinion, reshoot it. Oh, there you go. I think that settles it. Let's reshoot it. Okay, let's see. I think it's looking good. Does it look, look alright? Well, here we are. All right, let's do this reshoot. So last time we were talking about the concept of heroes and pedestals and power. When I was younger and I first started getting involved in animal activism back in the 90s, I was reading through everything I could get of radical grassroots militant literature, newsletters, magazines. So I was reading No Compromise. I was reading The Underground, Sea Shepherd Conservation Society journals. And I was reading about all these amazing actions, these amazing protests, people out in the high seas, people in the woods, people in laboratories, people in factory farms. And I really started to admire the work that these folks were doing. It was very impressive. It was very exciting to me. And so mentally, I started making this list of all these people that I really looked up to. I essentially made like a list of heroes. I didn't make this list to say, oh, I really admire them and, and, and put them up on the pedestal. Partly that was the reason I did it. The other part was I wanted to make a list of these people that, that I could meet, that I could work with, that I could organize with, that I could learn from. And over the years of doing activism, I ended up meeting all of these people and organizing with them and working alongside them and learning from them. But interesting. Like the one thing that they all had in common was But interestingly, the one thing that they all had in common was that they were all kind of terrible people. They just were not very good people. When I look back on that list and I think what a disappointing list of people that I had to look up to. And also not surprisingly was that that list was all men. We grew up in a very patriarchal society. I'm a white, heterosexual, cisgendered man with a US passport, which makes me pretty much the most privileged person in the world. And I dive into this grassroots, radical animal rights world, also very full of masculinity and bravado and, and chest pounding. And so naturally, but unfortunately, my list was all men. We are in a movement that props up men as leaders, that props up men as risk takers, that props up men as the people that are going to lead us. But when in fact, a large majority of the work in the animal rights movement is being done by women. That's not to say there aren't men doing good work, but the accolades, the pedestals, the power, that almost always goes to the men. And I think that's something we need to break. When we put men up on these pedestals, we also give them power. We essentially are handing them the keys to the movement, meaning they're driving. They're driving the show. Um, we're gonna sit in the passenger side. Most of the women are gonna sit in the back. These men are the ones who are gonna be getting the donations. These are the men that are gonna be making the strategies. These are the men that are gonna be saying we need to working on farm animals as opposed to vivisection or fur. These are the people that are making these decisions. And we've seen how this has been working out for us. Even in the past few weeks, the men in this movement have not just used their standing to direct the movement, but also to take advantage of the movement, particularly take advantage of the women in this movement. I spent a long time thinking about the concept of hero worship in the animal rights movement. It's something that's always made me feel a little uncomfortable, and I've always been trying to figure out ways to articulate it properly. And then Patrice Jones put out this article about hero worship that is amazing. And if you haven't read it, um, Patrice is going to say it way better than I'm going to in this, this video, so I would suggest pausing or turning this thing off and um, go read that article. I'll link it below. I'll wait. No, it's fine. I'll wait. Honestly, this is going to be way better than, than what I'm going to say. Are you done? You done? Okay. It's great, right? There, there are so many takeaways and so many quotes that are so important in that article. Like, it's just, it's just be mandatory reading. One of the many takeaways for me was that if we want to help correct this problem, just stop idolizing and hero worshiping and putting men into power full stop. Yes, there are men that do good work. Yes, there are men that have good strategies, good ideas. And they put their heart and soul into the animal rights movement. That's great. But men have had their shot. This is also not to say that there aren't women doing amazing work because there are tons and tons of women that are doing amazing work. Lauren Ornelas from the Food Empowerment Project doing fantastic work. Ariana Schberti doing Encompass, also doing amazing work. Direct Animal Action in New Zealand, an organization uh, that is all women-led 
and doing really amazing things, creative things, strategic things, and now currently doing a campaign against the rodeo um, that's working with all local communities to help put an end to it. So when we think about how we support these organizations and we support these women and support the work that they're doing, it's great to, to amplify their voices. It's great to push it out on social media, to participate in it any way you can. But it's also really important, in my opinion, uh, to put your money where your mouth is. They cannot do this work without funding. And a large majority of the funding goes to the male-led organizations, the male-led campaigns. So for me, I've picked four organizations that are all women of color led, that are really important to me, that I think are really doing important work, um, both in the animal rights movement and outside of the animal rights movement. Um, and I donate to them monthly. It's not a lot of money, but I do what I can, and I think that's really important. And I'm not saying these things to get pats on the backs or high fives. Even if it's 10 bucks, commit to doing a monthly donation. Support these women, their work, their organizations, their campaigns by not just amplifying their voices, but providing them with funding to do the work. So men, it's important to take a back seat now more than ever. We've been in the driver's seat of this movement far too long. We've had our chance, we've had our go at things, we've done some good things, we've done some horrible things. We are not representing properly what the animal rights movement is. And in some cases, we're really taking advantage of the animal rights movement, particularly the people in it, particularly the women in it. Guys, there's no shortage of female identified folks in the animal rights movement doing incredible work. Let's amplify their voices, let's amplify their work, let's fund them, and let's have them lead us into the next generation of the animal rights movement. Hey everybody, that's the end of episode five. I hope you like what you're seeing. If you do, please like, leave a comment, please share. Most importantly, please subscribe if you haven't already. The last video, we had 163 subscribers. This time we have 250. That's pretty amazing. Let's keep this going. If you do have questions, comments, concerns, want to put in some people that you admire, put them in the uh, comments below. Let's start having big conversations. Let's have respectful debates. Let's be kind to one another. Let's think of new strategies, new tactics, and new ways to win. Ultimately, let's find new people that are going to lead us to these points. And so until then, Dolly and I are saying goodbye. We will see you in episode six. Put the place up. Yeah, we know